combine the last two in South Korea, and then uh, we'll be opening the sort of passing the mic around if there are any questions from the floor for Alan. So you can start thinking in the meantime. But you've mentioned that you wrote the, the book Don't Panic, you're positive about South Africa. Uh, and, and I think that links with your new venture that you involved in. So maybe just tell the audience about uh, the project this is where and, uh, and and why you're positive about it. Okay. Okay, so look, I've, I've been lucky enough to travel a lot. I've been to about 65 countries around the world, and uh, and, I, and I haven't seen a country that's as good as South Africa. All its pluses and its minuses, package is amazing. So, um, and it's mainly because of opportunity. So, if I was not, if I didn't really, you know, if I wasn't hungry, maybe go live in Australia, uh, America, whatever. America might sound like the land of opportunity. It's not really. There's a lot of competition. There. Compared to what we have, yeah, this is the land of opportunity. So, you know, on the way to the balance of things, I think it's, it's the land of opportunity. All things being equal, you have a better life here at every tier of society. So the poorest of the poor in America have a worse life than the poorest of the poor in South Africa. And the richest of the rich in South Africa have a better life than the richest of the rich in America. So at every tier, outside of absolute terms, relative terms, amazing country. And, um, but I also don't think that country will just keep itself going forever, you know, so you can't just sit on the sidelines and say, I'm going to make money or I'm just going to do my thing and the rest of it. Good luck, you know. So we're all in it together and uh, that dawned on me when I had my first child because I started uh, picturing myself having to tell her when she was like 16 that, you know, what she's going to say, Dad, what did you do? You know, were you participating or were you on the sidelines? And I didn't want to say I was just on the sidelines, and particularly if it can go well for the country. So I thought, okay, how do I uh, blend this kind of make money hunger that I have with this ambition to get rich uh, with helping people. You know, so I can feel like it's doing two things at the same time. And we started World of Avatar, which was apps for dumb phones. It was smart apps for dumb phones. So we want to do, uh, exploit the opportunity created by a, a massive penetration of mobile phones in Africa. But the fact that Americans think that everyone's got a smartphone, everyone's got a credit card, everyone's got free broadband. And so they don't really compete in our space. They don't create product for our space. And so we wanted to do that. You know? And that became quite big, and then we bought Mixit, which is the ultimate, uh, you know, uh, smart app for a dumb phone. And um, anyway, that all didn't work out particularly well for me. Uh, then, then, I, then when I took my little break, I, I came back to South Africa, and I was still convinced that um, this is the place to be. I want to live here? Land of opportunity. It always comes back to land of opportunity. It's just the place where I have an edge. I don't have an edge in Australia. I don't have an edge in England. I don't have an edge in America. Definitely don't have an edge in China. So I want to live here, I want to get ahead. I want to be here. So, and how do I do that? But, and then we actually we started this project, this is where it's a non-profit company to, as a side venture. And uh, when I was at Mixit, we'd done the Stellenbosch free Wi-Fi project where we just, just working together with the government, we could roll out really cheap public free Wi-Fi. And that became an orphan after I left, and the people asked me to pick up from where I left off. And so we set up Project Disease Where, but when I went to the municipality, they weren't interested. You know, the lights weren't, no one's in it. And then I went to the city of Cape Town, and you know, if you don't know what a good job the city of Cape Town are doing, just go and ask them, because they're going to take it. So I you know, realized I can't really help people who don't think they need any help. So I went to Pretoria, where I grew up, Tuani. You know. The nice thing about being from Pretoria is that everywhere else in the world is awesome. I can give them a place. Afghanistan, Iraq, no problem. And then I find myself back there, Pitching to the mayor of Twani, and, and and it started very small, but today, City of Twani contracts Project to Siswe for 200 million rand every year to roll out free Wi-Fi in townships and uh, poor communities. And by 2017, already 22% of all buildings in Twani are now within walking distance of public free Wi-Fi. By 2017, every citizen will be able to walk out of their door walking distance to a free Wi-Fi zone. So it's internet as a utility, like water, like electricity, subsidised by municipalities. And that's and it, it is a non-profit. Uh, at, at some stage, I realised it doesn't matter what my ambitions are. You don't often get an opportunity like this to work with the government, um, and it makes such a big difference. So, I've been doing that for about two and a half years. It's reached a point now where it's very big and it's stable, and it's not that exciting for me anymore. So my big priority is I want to I want to um, be startups. I like building new things. So from next year, I'll hand over the CEO rights to my chief operating officer, and then I'm more focused on Hero Telecoms. But for a CISWEB, my particular next effort is PE, Nelson Mandela Bay. I want uh, Nelson Mandela Bay to be the first metro to copy Twani. And, uh, and you know, by this time next year, there's no reason you can't have a million people on free internet carrying PE itself, you know, which 
in my opinion, is the future of South Africa. You know, like rural, non khating areas of South Africa is where the future is, where the problems are. And if PE can be the leader, then uh, it'll be quite cool. It'll also give me a reason to come to PE more often. So. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.